The Shape Builder tool allows you to add separate vector shapes together to create more complex shape designs. And you can also use it to delete overlapping shapes in order to help you create new designs as well. To get started, let's look at the guitar design I have here. The finished illustration on the right was created using these simple shapes you can see on my artboard to the left. And I'll show you how this was put together. If we first of all locate the Shape Builder tool from the Tools panel on the left, we can then go ahead and select all of the layers we want to interact with, and then take a look at the context toolbar to see the options we have available to us. As you might expect to see, you can add, take away, and create new shapes with this tool. And by default, these options are all deselected. This allows you to make your shape selection first, or make multiple shape selections, and then decide from one of the options. So I'll select these overlapping areas here on the left, and these sections on the right too. Then I can go and select Delete to remove those shapes from my design. With the main body of the guitar, I'm going to change this to Add Beforehand, which means every time we've finished making our selection, we quickly create a shape rapidly one after the other. This is a great way to work when you're experimenting with designs, or if you're already used to using a tool like this, as it can really speed up your workflow, being able to quickly create shapes in this way. And when you look at the finished design again, you can easily see how by retaking these steps and adding some additional flourishes and elements, you can create something interesting really very quickly and easily. So in my next example, I want to introduce the idea of creating gaps with the shape builder. You can see how I've simply taken two ellipses, then duplicated them on top of each other, making sure that the ones at the bottom of the layer stack are a bit bolder than the ones on top. And now what we can do this time is try a different drag method instead. So I'll change this to line, and I'll also make sure that we have these extra settings enabled too. So I'll keep both clean up unused curves and clean up unused areas enabled. And I'll also keep use style from first selected too. Now when I go to make my selection, I can easily highlight the areas I need with one smooth motion. And once I've selected these areas, I've converted these four shapes into one single curve layer, with my intended gaps helping me to create this traditional infinite loop symbol. Alternatively, if I undo those steps, I could also use the third option to create a new shape from selected areas. So I'll use my two finger tap to undo, and I'll change my settings in the context toolbar again, and then take the same steps. This has kept my original ellipses intact, allowing me to go back and try a different variation if that was something I needed to do which is definitely quite a good workflow to consider. And finally, the last example I wanted to show you is a way to combine a few of these methods we've just looked at. Here I have something similar to my infinite loop, but I'm going to create a more complex interwoven knot type of design. So I'll make sure I have the shape builder selected on the left, and I'll select all of my ellipses at once. This time, I want to make sure the create new shape option is deselected. I also want to switch back to freehand, so I can select along the curves of the shapes, and I'll make sure I have the other options enabled too. Now I can go ahead and start to select the various parts of the design I want to keep. You'll notice that there's a particular way to achieve the knotted look we're after, which involves making sure we select an even number of segments each time to help keep the design looking even and symmetrical once we get to the end. And once we've selected all the areas we need, we can go ahead and choose Add from the context toolbar. And just like that, we've created our new interwoven knotted design. I'd now like to add a couple of extra steps, starting by changing from one single curve layer and separating it into multiple segments and layers. So I'll go over to the Move tool, and we now have our shape selected, and I can then go to Edit, and choose Separate Curves. Now we can see from our Layers panel, this has broken up our original shape into multiple separate layers, as intended. So I can now go around and select each circle and group it together. And I'll use the single tap gesture to help me select multiple objects as well. Then we can make the most of our Long Press, Quick Menu option, and select Group, and repeat those steps for the rest of the design. And now I'm left with just four groups to work with, making it easy for me to add a new colour to each group. And I'll also use the colour panel to help me change these colours too. This is just another way to help get the interwoven knot design to be more effective by adding a few simple extra steps. The Shape Builder tool is another really flexible and powerful part of Affinity Designer. So hopefully these examples have given you an idea of how you might be able to use it yourself. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.